We are on the cusp of the Lenten season. It begins on Wednesday, February 17th. And to help you as you begin your journey with Jesus, we are offering you an Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. It will be broadcast on YouTube, and it is also available on our Facebook page. And so we invite you to join us then. And during the service, uh, we are going to affix an ash cross to our forehead. This is a typical ritual that is done uh, on Ash Wednesday. Uh, And if you wish to obtain one, please just contact us at the church office and Colleen will be sure to get it to you. And uh, we hope that you'll be able to participate with us during the service and affix your ash tattoo cross on that special day. Again, Wednesday, February 17th at 7 o'clock. I hope to see you there. Today, Sunday, February 14th, marks the end of the Epiphany season for us. On Wednesday, February 17th, our Lenten season begins. It is the season that we accompany Jesus on his way to Jerusalem and all the dramatic events that would unfold for him in that holy week. And as we begin that journey, we thought that you might like a companion to take along with you. So we've created one for you, our Lenten Reflection Booklet for 2021. In it are the reflections and thoughts about scripture that have been shared with us by over 20 people, I think, that are are reflected in this book. And so I'm hoping that you will be as eager as I am to read those. They will be available to you on Facebook on a daily basis. Every day there will be a new reflection until we get to Easter Sunday. And you can also download the whole booklet at one time by simply going to our website. It'll be posted there. So those are a couple of ways that you can access the brilliant thoughts the deep and thoughtful thoughts of people from our faith community. I hope you'll take the opportunity to take this companion along with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Central United Church. 
In the midst of this cold weekend, we come to you bringing you the warmth of love. Today is Sunday, February 14th, and of course, it's Valentine's Day. And today we're marking that special celebration. Of course, every time that we get together for worship, it is a special celebration. But today, we wanted to shower you with love and hope and pray that your day is filled with the warmth of someone around you with love and prayers and blessings. Welcome to our worship service. May you be blessed and showered with love. Today is Valentine's Day, and there's a, quite a few years ago, the Valentine's Day was on a Sunday. Um, and this one time, we were living in Oak Ridge at the time, and we, we were picking up uh, an elderly lady who lived on 90th Avenue, and we're picking her up and taking her to church. And that morning, Lee had given me a Valentine's Day card to put it on the kitchen table. I looked at it and then just shoved it aside. And I guess my non-verbals, it made her very cross and I didn't see what she was mad about. I looked at it, I liked it. But anyway, she, was con she stayed mad at me. So we picked up uh, this elderly lady and we're driving across the Glenmore Reservoir, and she said to us, you are such a lovely couple. I'm sure you two never fight. <laughs> While I was driving, Lee was in the back seat. We just kind of glared at each other. When she said that, I nearly drove off the bridge. And anyway, we got to church. When we drove her home, we told her that what had actually happened, and we had a good laugh about it. So it doesn't matter how, how much, how you spend your day, John and I always find humor in anything and in, in a lot of things that happen. A couple of days later, we were laughing about how she said, oh, you guys must never fight. Well, we were having a good chuckle over that. So it turned out to be okay. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Today marks the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Epiphany is often referred to as a season of light. During the past six weeks, we have been reading stories about Jesus, traveling throughout the regions of Palestine, bringing light, love, and hope to the people who flock to hear his message. Each week and with each story, the light of Jesus has grown stronger 
still in the dark corners of the world. Today, we again light our Christ candle to remind ourselves that the light of Jesus fills every darkened corner of our souls and every darkened corner of the world. May the light of Christ fill your heart today. As individuals, as a group, as a community of faith, we gather in this place to listen, to pray, to hear the songs of faith, to explore love, to discover that we are love, to be reminded of the comforting presence of God, even in the midst of turmoil and trouble. Welcome to our worship service this morning. May you be uplifted in faith and know that you are surrounded by love. Great are your works, full of grace and mercy, words of wisdom and comfort, stories of faith, to give us courage. For this we gather in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, my young friends. This is me, Miss Mary. Today I'm showing you a word that I'm pretty sure most of you will know. That's right, mom. M-O-M spells mom. But are we sure that's what this word really says? What if I turn it over like this? Now it says, wow. And wow is a good word to describe it too because just by turning the paper in a different direction, we have a whole different word. It's the same paper, but we're seeing it in a whole new way. Something similar happens in this week's Bible story. Some disciples are walking with Jesus up a high mountain, when all of a sudden, they see Jesus in a new and different way. His clothes suddenly become dazzling white, and they heard the voice of God explaining, this is my son. In the Bible, there is a special name for this happening. We call this the transfiguration. When something is transfigured, it changes the way it looks or it is transformed. We could say that caterpillars are transfigured when they change into butterflies. Their whole appearance changes and they become something new. Jesus doesn't change his shape though. But just like our word mom, suddenly the disciples were able to see him in a whole new way. They see him as the son of God. And wow, it was a very exciting moment that changed everything for them. Thanks for listening.
Loving God, we come to you this morning in deep prayer. We take this opportunity to open our hearts to you. So often our hearts are closed because we're afraid. And so today, in the safety of this circle of worship, we come to you and we ask you to bring yourself to us so that together we might be united in the common quest for good and for love that this world so desperately needs. There are many places in our world, O oh God, where your love and the love of humanity needs to be washed over the folks so that they can begin again, that they can be healed, that they can know that they matter. Our scripture reading today reminds us that Jesus was your beloved and that you cared for him and that he was the one that you chose to spread the good news. We are grateful for that good news because it speaks of unconditional love, love between all peoples of the earth, love between family members, love between lovers, love that changes and transforms us and makes our world a holy and a sacred place. In those places, O oh God, where there is no love, where there is only hatred and chaos and violence, we ask you to give us courage to shine the light of love on those places. We pray this day for our American friends who are going through such a difficult time in these latter days. The transition of power has been difficult and there is much division in the country and so we pray for them. They are our nearest neighbor and they are our cousins. We also pray for our own country. We know that there are divisions here. We know that divisive rhetoric and anger often steals into a room and takes away all the love in that room. So we pray for those people that are in leadership positions around us. May we offer them good advice and direction and may they listen. May we have a sense that we care for the common good of us all, that it is truly love that we wish that for the world to live into and live by. So as we live the commandment that Jesus gave to us, that we are to love you and to love our neighbor, may we find ways to do that, even in the smallest of ways, because the light of Christ's love transforms the world even in the smallest of ways. And we ask, O oh God, for your blessing upon Central United Church and all that it seeks to do in the world. May our initiatives, our caring, our compassion, our striving for social justice, may all of it be received by you, O oh God, and blessed. We thank you for the powerful prayer that Jesus taught us when he was on the earth when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Here we are at church again, a good place to be. In September of this year, Dorothy and I will have been married some 65 years. We met in church, recorded in church, and uh, October 30th, we had a date. Six weeks later, we were engaged. All of this in a church activity. And our kids were raised, of course, and nurtured by the church and their children. And now our great grandchildren are all part of the church program. We strive to keep the romance alive in our marriage. We endeavor to do as many activities as possible together. 
We eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the table together. We always have, and we always will. We keep the romance alive with kindness and actions. Ron makes my breakfast every morning and has done so since he retired 33 years ago. It is very special. We, before COVID, used to go on dates periodically. It is good to get away from the regular routine of daily living. In 1991, for a good length of time, we had a good two-time when we went to Arizona, and it took us four months to get there. We visited every province in Canada and all of the peripheral states in the U.S., and uh, it was glorious. The hearts on display here are a part of what our family did for us before Christmas. Because we could not be together, our sons-in-law had each of our grandchildren's families decorate a letter in the word family. As a reminder, we are loved. Our girls each did a heart. The first is a cushion and has pictures of us and our entire family of 27. The other has vines entwining the family together, culminating with a verse from Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us ask God to bless our offerings. We bring our gifts to you, O oh God, in response to your gracious love. We bring our lives in response to Christ's call to serve others. We bring the coin of our realm with a desire to work with Christ to transform the world. Bless all that we bring to you this day, O oh God. Amen. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, 
one for Moses and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son. The beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, no one was with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have had so very much to celebrate on this Sunday, February 14th. We started off by mentioning St. Valentine for Valentine's Day. Many of you perhaps know the story. It is grounded in a real person, a saint of the church. Valentine lived in about the third century, and he was a very devout Christian, devoted in his work as a priest and also devoted to his people and telling them the good news of the unconditional love of Jesus. Well, as you can imagine, the Roman Empire was not thrilled by all of this proselytizing going on because they were always afraid of insurrection. And so the emperor at that time, Claudius, called Valentine to the royal palace and said, I want you to recant and stop or I will execute you. Well, Valentine said, no, I can't do that. I am a follower of Jesus. So Claudius threw him in jail. And the night before he was to be executed, Valentine was visited by the jailer's daughter, who was blind. And the story goes that he healed the blind daughter and that he gave her a little note from my Valentine. And from that moment and over the course of the centuries, uh, we have developed into the modern St. Valentine's Day that we have. But it was grounded in an actual person. Uh, in fact, the Roman Catholic Church named him as a saint, and the, the feast that is celebrated for St. Valentine is February 14th. So very much of our history is grounded in the faith and devotion of Christians who have gone before us. The other important part of today is that it is uh, the end of the epiphany season, and it's uh, the transfiguration of Jesus. The scripture passage that was read for us this morning speaks about Jesus and his disciples going up a mountain, and there the, his clothes and face are turned to dazzling white, and the Elijah and Moses, two ancient prophets uh, that were revered in the Jewish faith, are there and can be seen by the disciples. And then there's that moment when God, God's voice is heard. This is my beloved. That's a love story too. Jesus moves forward from that moment and recognizes again what he is called to do in this world, to tell the people about God's unconditional love for them. And as he did that, of course, he too uh, brought the ire of the Roman Empire down upon him and suffered dreadful consequences for it. But he would not stop speaking about love. And that's our call as Christians today. Even in the midst of violence and chaos, we are called as a people of faith to speak about love in all of its many forms and configurations. I hope that you've enjoyed some of the love stories that you've heard this morning during the service. Because I, I would hope and pray that when people think about Central United Church and the community of faith that inhabits it and walks around in the world, that people would say, look at how those Christians love. That's us. May you go forth and do in all the coming days. Amen. Valentine's Day, that's the day of love. Yes. 
and we have this notion that a uh, Valentine's Day is only a celebration intended for couples. No. But hey, it's not because you can celebrate Valentine's Day with anybody that you love. Agreed. Your family, your siblings, uh, even the people that you work with, yeah. and even those that you go to church with. But there is this one person that me and you and every one of us should celebrate Valentine's Day with and he is my act he's my favorite actually I hope it's me I don't think so no, no. actually he's it's Jesus all right okay after okay. all what did the book of Mark said love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all Amen. your mind and with all your strength and the second is this you have to love your neighbor as yourself there is no commandment greater than this amen thank you marvik for quoting those verses from the bible thanks be to god praise be to god now valentine's day is the day of love as we all know but it is also a celebration and commemoration of the life of saint valentine mm, yeah. in honor of his advocacy legacy and his sacrifices do you know that he sacrificed his own happiness his freedom and his life ultimately Ooh. because of his strong belief that God has given everyone the right to be happy to be loved and right to matrimonial sacrament everything he knew that it could cost his life the night before his execution he was offered with a very generous offer a life-saving offer that if uh, he could change his uh, his stand mm -hmm. he would admit that uh, his belief is wrong okay. that he would be released hmm. perhaps a simple yes he could have been avoided the uh, execution yeah he could have been released from the prison and be united with his beloved but because of his strong conviction with god he turned it down that is why we are celebrating valentine's day today now i'm inviting everyone encouraging everyone to spread the love let the love conquer the world let the love let the love cross the, the boundaries that limit, that uh, restrict our happiness and our prosperity of our relationship. Let the love, or let us fight for the love that is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. That's what we did 10 years ago. <laughs> and here we are today, getting stronger and stronger. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day, everyone.
We end our worship service this morning as we began it, surrounded by love. And so our prayer for you as you depart into the rest of your week and begin your Lenten journey with Jesus, we pray that you might be showered with love and that every day you will find a moment to speak of love and act with love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning and happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I just wanted to share a very special love relationship. Um, this week on February 11th, my little granddaughter was born and welcomed into the world. Uh, she is the little sister of my four-year-old granddaughter. And these are the children of my daughter, Corrine, my son-in-law, Mike. And as some of you know, I have a little prayer basket. And when I'm praying for people, I do little hearts. So there I've been praying for my own kids while they were um, in hospital delivering a baby just a couple days ago. And we are so blessed to have healthy, a healthy baby born to our family. And um, my heart just is, uh, I just can't explain how amazing uh, this love is for this child that you've never really even met. And of course, I was fortunate to be able to even see her yesterday um, when they were home from the hospital, uh, just home from the hospital. And uh, I'm just so grateful for their precious and miraculous life. There's nothing like a brand new baby to show us the a miracle, the absolute miracle of life that uh, God provides. And it's quite, quite something. So on this special Valentine's Day for us in 2021, during a pandemic, we have a baby welcomed into our family and we're just reminded of the great love that we have for one another. So just give your favorite Valentine a squeeze and uh, just uh, appreciate the beautiful, wonderful life we have. And it's because of the love that we have between us. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone.
Well, just want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day and stay nice and warm and stay inside. <laughs>